When you think of the future of mobility in cities, is this what you think of? Quiet electric cars that whisk you from point A to point B without you interacting with them outside of inputting where you want to go. For years, futurists have been predicting that autonomous vehicles are coming imminently. Though I'm a bit dubious on that claim considering automakers can't even figure out whether cameras or LiDAR are the way to go on autonomous vehicles and governments would need to have a whole bunch of concurrence on standards and lane markings and things of that nature, I do believe that they are coming eventually. And I think it has the potential to ruin cities and increase social inequity if core issues are not addressed. And here's why. Autonomous vehicles will increase VMT or vehicular miles traveled on roadways. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation, my local DOT, defines VMT as a measure of the miles driven on a specific area in a specific time frame. VMT is very important when measuring the amount of cars on a roadway in a given time. So first and foremost, there's a significant risk that trips that would otherwise be linked would become decoupled. Think of the mom that's going to work that drops off one kid at daycare and the other at school. If this mom wanted to save some time, maybe she could send one of the family's vehicles to school while she takes her other kid to daycare. Now two cars are on the road instead of one, and it's likely that both of those cars will make the trip home instead of parking wherever they go. So in this example, mom has doubled her VMT and added another trip. Autonomous vehicles may also spawn trips that might not have otherwise occurred. Imagine a teen wants to go to the movies. Mom and dad don't have the ability to take them because they're busy, and uh, the team might otherwise have to stay home. But now that they have an autonomous vehicle, they can send that car to the movies. So now that kid is able to go. Or another case, imagine that a kid wants to see their grandparents on the other side of town, but grandma can't drive and mom can't take them, or dad can't take them. Now that child can be loaded into a car and sent to grandma's house whenever they want to go. These are trips that wouldn't have otherwise occurred that are now occurring. So there are obviously some benefits to this, but there will be more vehicles on the road as a result of this change. Autonomous vehicles will make it more difficult to be a cyclist or a pedestrian. I mentioned earlier that VMT could double, since there would be no disincentive to send your car home after it dropped you off at work. That means double the cars on the road at any given time, particularly in the peak periods when people normally commute to work. That's going to make it more difficult to be a pedestrian or a bicyclist, particularly if you're trying to cross the street. But those vehicles might not necessarily go home. Elon Musk has alluded that autonomous Teslas could be used as taxis when not in service. This means that vehicles that would otherwise be off the road are now circulating around in the roadways. Think this is far-fetched? Hear it from Elon himself. We made an important change to our leases, so if you lease a Model 3, you don't have the option of buying it at the end of the lease. We want them back. If you buy the car, you can, keep, you, you can keep it, but if you lease it, you have to give it back. Tesla wants to be able to use the vehicles as autonomous taxis once the vehicles are returned. And all of this occurs on the backdrop of cities and states and the federal government generally trying to figure out how to reduce VMT because it's been outpacing population growth for the last 40 or so years. Autonomous vehicles may increase inequity. Those that can afford to do so will be able to send out their autonomous vehicles to operate as taxis during the day. This not only increases VMT, but will increase inequity. Think about it. This means that someone that owns a car will be able to generate an income from their car simply by owning it. This means that the cost of an automobile will likely increase because of this added utility. But it's not just going to make people that can own an automobile richer, it's going to put people out of jobs. There are an estimated 47,000 taxi drivers in the US. Those jobs would be obsolete. There are also approximately 600,000 bus drivers in the US who are also likely to lose their jobs. But more striking is that there are 3.5 million truck drivers in the US, nearly 10% of which are owner operators. These jobs are likely to be eliminated and large companies are likely to be the ones to benefit from this. Think of your Teslas, your Rivians, and your Amazons. Now, this isn't to say that I'm rallying against progress. I'm just saying that these jobs are good, family-supporting, blue-collar jobs that aren't being replaced with similar jobs. There's a popular narrative out there that we could just train everyone to 
take new jobs, but that's not always the case. So it's, it's something we really need to think about in a critical way. Autonomous vehicles could dramatically reduce the demand for transit. And this is something I'm really worried about. Autonomous vehicles would provide a point-to-point -point service, which is convenient and attractive to choice riders or people that have another option for their transportation. These types of riders can be the difference between a service being viable or completely financially infeasible. There are a number of people who believe that transit should pay for itself, which is absolutely ridiculous, considering we don't require other modes of transportation to pay for themselves, including cars. However, it will likely improve arguments for the detractors, which will lead to service cuts that will harm those that are the most vulnerable. A reduction in subsidy will mean that transit fares go up. And it's not as if the autonomous taxis are going to be able to match the fares of a transit service. The scale just isn't there. The autonomous taxis are also not going to be accessible, so if you're disabled, you're out of luck. And they will take up more physical space on the roadway than a bus. It's wildly less efficient. And my biggest fear? Sprawl. Autonomous vehicles could completely shift development patterns because people won't factor in distance to work the way they do right now when they're figuring out where they want to live. This could be absolutely catastrophic to the built and natural environment, and I'm not really sure that there are any good answers on how to address this right now. So it's all doom and gloom, right? Well, not really. So there are a ton of opportunities in autonomous vehicles. First of all, lots and lots of urban land will become available. It's estimated that a full one-third of urban land is dedicated to parking. That's eight parking stalls for every one vehicle out there in the U.S. With autonomous vehicles, we should be able to dramatically reduce the space allocated to parking. This could increase the density of cities, actually reducing the need for autonomous vehicles because we'll be able to walk or bike to our daily needs. But rights of way need to be able to change. Autonomous vehicles will be able to travel closer to one another and communicate with one another, meaning that less lane miles will be needed to accommodate the added VMT. This space could be used for alternative transportation, or sidewalk cafes, or the greening of urban spaces. Really important with climate change, considering all of these paved spaces are why cities flood. And autonomous vehicles could provide mobility for people that are unable or do not want to drive. Think of the elderly, disabled, children, or just those that don't want to drive, like I mentioned, or those that live in communities that lack adequate transit service. So there are some things that the collective we have to do. Government at all levels needs to maintain communication with automakers and leaders in autonomous vehicles to ensure that lane markings and signage is standardized. While standards do exist in the US and in other places, that doesn't stop the odd side from being installed. Even today's cars with Lane Keep Assist are remarkably capable under normal circumstances. The problem is that there are many edge cases in the real world, or cases that occur outside of normal operating conditions. These types of operating conditions can completely throw off autonomous vehicles. This includes things like this situation in San Francisco, where vehicles became completely confused due to a dead-end road and turned around, doing Y-turns like crazy. And roundabouts generally are a concern. They're often non-standardized designs that can really throw off an AI system. And cities really need to plan for autonomous vehicles. These vehicles are going to require loading zones where people can get into the cars. And legal frameworks that determine liability are absolutely needed before autonomous vehicles are unleashed on our streets. We're also going to need to think about what to do with all the cars that are not autonomous. It's going to be difficult to plan for an autonomous future when traditional vehicles are out there. And many cities own parking ramps or parking garages for anyone who's not in Wisconsin. Cities need to think about what they're gonna do with these garages, ensure that these can be redeveloped into other uses. So there's a lot to think about with autonomous vehicles. Do you think I'm on base? Did I get anything horribly wrong? Please let me know. I wanna know what you have to say. And if you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button and considering subscribing to the channel. This is my first venture into this kind of content and I want to know how you feel. I can't wait to hear from you and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.